a sheni. Pesach test, parshas b'shalach. Vayidufu mitzrayim achreim. Mitzrayim pursued them. Vayasigu osam chonim alayam. They caught them camping by the sea, which they intentionally traveled to that location. Kolsus rechav paro uforoshu b'chelo. All his chariot corps, all his soldiers, his armies, Apiachiros, the Fne Baltzvon. The location was Pichiros, before the Lord of the North. So the way Paro processed this moment was that since it was the only, this was the only deity which God did not destroy, that that they camped before Baltzvon and they were caught by the sea. So Paro believed he caught them, and they had no route of escape. Okay. Uparo he grieve. The Yisu bnei Yisrael say to him. Paro came closer, and the bnei Yisrael lifted their eyes. I mean, to indicate tefillah, prayer, supplication. We'll see. No, they lifted their eyes. And they see Mitzrayim traveling after them. It's obvious. It should have said in the plural. Nosei is singular. And they were very frightened. And the Bnei Yisrael, they called out to Hashem. Now, Rashi makes it a point to meet it, which is the Medjish. No seach, belev echot kish echot. Why is it in the singular rather than the plural? We're talking about hundreds of thousands of troops, chariot corps, cavalry, everybody's there. Because there was lev echot, they were united with one purpose, Therefore, they were like Ishechad. Their objective united them as if they were one person. One interpretation. Another interpretation. They saw the archangel of Egypt. Was coming to assist the Egyptian people against the Jews. So they saw the spiritual force, the archangel. It says they were very frightened. But Yitzhaku, they cried out to Hashem. <clears throat> they immediately took hold of their vocation of their forefathers. We find that what is the power of the Jew? The power of the Jew is it's Kol Kol Yaakov. Our part, power lies in our voice, which is Tefillah and Torah. This is in regard to Sodom. He returned to the location that he prayed. He stood there. He came upon the location. Now, I just want to make a differentiation. He says, where do we find tefillah by the Ovos? Avram prayed, and we learned, the Gemara tells us, how do you know that you're supposed to be kaviyam mokum the tefillah, so that whenever you pray, you should always pray in the same location. We learn from Avram Avinu, because it says, he went back to the location which he had prayed. He had always prayed in the same location when he prayed on that Sodom should not be destroyed. Yitzchok l'sof asodi prayed, and that's what we learn. Yitzchok tikin shemincha. We learn from there that Yitzchok enacted the tefillah of mincha. The Yaakov yifka b'mokum. That was at night. That's Yaakov tikin tefillah arvis. Regarding Yitzchok and Yaakov, it wasn't a time of of danger. The Yifke had met, this is in the Haram Uriah. <clears throat> he prayed, he went there to pray. To pray. Yitzhak was 
in the field, he prayed. Doesn't say he prayed about anything specific. I mean, here we're talking about, you need serious supplication here. We're caught between the devil and the, and the dark blue sea, and unless God comes to help you, it's all over. The only thing we're, pray, we're pointing out from here is that the Jew has an avenue, the avenue of prayer, of supplication. Where do we find it? Because we see the Ovos already established that concept. We being their descendants, we have that entry into the audience that Hashem will be attentive to our supplication. This is Tavsu Umetzavosam. So here they're praying because they believe in Tefillah. And a moment later, Vayomer El Moshe Hamibli Ekforbi Mitzroyim. They say the Moshe, are there a lack of graves in Egypt? Did you take us to die here in the desert? What did you, did you do to us? He took us out of Egypt. I mean, it's a little, it's almost like schizophrenic. One moment, they're believing in Tefillah. And the next moment, they, they're complaining, Moshe, what did you do? I mean, when you pray, is it instantaneous? It's not instantaneous. Maybe you have to wait just a little bit for Hashem to respond. But they pray, and the moment they finish praying, immediately start complaining, or there a lack of graves in Egypt. Why did you take us out of Egypt to die at the, at the seashore, in the desert? So the Rabban learns over here, when those who complained are a lack of graves, it's not all the Jews complained. There were different elements among the Jews. There were those Jews who had faith and believed in the Tefillah. They prayed. The others, if they prayed, it was at best lip service. They really didn't believe in the Tefillah. And they are the ones who came with the complaint. Why did you take us in Egypt to die here in the desert? We could have died in Egypt. So it wasn't all the Jews. It was, it was a certain element, certain segment of the population who came with this complaint. Okay? Now, it's interesting. This, here we're talking about this, the 20% that was taken out of Egypt. This was the 20% who had faith that Hashem would provide for them the desert, and they're not concerned that humanly it's impossible to survive the desert. But what about when you have the sword is on your throat at that moment? It's a new level of faith you need. To what's going to be tomorrow, I have faith. God will take care of me. Now that tomorrow comes, and there's no oasis, and there's no food, and I see the next moment, nothing changing. It's another level of trust. Trust. This is something, there's a new level. Leaving Egypt, one thing, believing Hashem will provide to them in the desert, that's one thing. Now that we're confronted with the reality that we're caught between the enemy and the sea, and there's no room to escape, this is something, it's another level. <clears throat> Therefore, the certain segment of Klal Yisrael begin complaining. just want to bring out a certain point. We find, the Gemara tells us in Brochus, that Chizkiyo Mel Chihuda was on his deathbed. And Yeshaya Novi comes and says to him, you will never leave your sickbed. Why? Because the reason why you're dying is because you didn't procreate. So Chizkiyo Mel Chihuda says to Yeshaya Novi, but I see my divine vision that I'm going to have a son who's going to be evil. How could I bring such a son into the world? He was one of the most evil kings we ever had. This is Menashe, the son of Chishio Melch Yudah, king of Judah. So Yeshaya says to Chishio, don't meddle in God's hidden secret ways. It's God's business. You have an obligation to procreate. You have an obligation to do your best. What can a child that'll be? That's God's business. That's not your business. Don't meddle in the hidden secrets of God. Okay? But he says, but because you didn't, you will die. So Chizkiyo Melch Yudah says to Yeshaya Hanavi, he says, 
He says, I have a tradition which was transmitted through the Davidic line that In other words, even if the sword is on your throat, even if the sword is on your throat, you should not despair from mercy. God's mercy could come even if the sword is on your throat. That Those are the words Chizkiyot Ben Yudah said to Yeshaya. And he says, he, didn't, he says to him, Ben Omotz, his name was Yeshaya Ben Omotz, he said, Ben Omotz, get out. He threw him out. He says, because I have this tradition that Afilu Cherv Munachas al Tzavoro, Al Yishashman Rachmim, you should not despair from mercy. So what's the level of faith? What is the tradition? The person is about to pull the trigger. The cherub is al tzavoro. The person is at the door of death. Even at that moment, a Jew, if you have sufficient faith, God could even pull you out at that last moment. He could save you at that last moment. That is one's belief in tefillah. The Jews over here had cherub al tzavoro. The Egyptian armies with the cavalry, chariot corps, all of them, they were there and the court between them and the sea. No route of escape. What is this? This is Cherev al Tzavoru. Al Yishayish bin Arachmi. But the, that is a special level. Special level. But the other elements, they said, Hamid Lein Kfar Bum Troyim, or there were lack of graves. We could have died. In, the, in, in Egypt, you know, we don't have to die here in the desert. What did you do to us? Why did you take us out of Egypt? But I'm just showing, when we speak about the level, it says, the reason why they prayed, because it's Umen Tzavosam, it was the vocation of the Jew, of their forefathers. If you go as a vocation, because that's what Jews do, they pray. But in addition, the question, to what degree do you believe in that? The power of prayer, of tefillah. A Jew has to believe that even, as I said, as Chizkiyot Melch Yudah said to Yeshayu Hanovi, I feel even if the, the knife is on your throat, you don't give up. Hashem is always there. What's difficult is this. The Jews witnessed 10 plagues. That's what they witnessed. The Jews are being pursued by the Egyptians this is the seventh day. There's, there's right, there are six days, and we see in a moment there was a cloud separated between the Egyptians and the Jews. And the, the, and the Egyptians were shooting catapults, arrows, spears, all kinds of things at them. And the cloud separating between them and the Egyptians, it could not penetrate the cloud. I mean, God, every moment is providing miracles for them, literally. If you see you're in the hand of God, literally in his hand, and he's protecting you, what do you mean a lack of graves? Evidently, he's going to take you across. Somehow, you're going to cross that sea, whether it's through the sea, over the sea. What are you worried? But the difference is, when they were protected by the cloud, visually, they didn't see the arrows coming through. And even if they did, they saw the shield. The cloud was the shield. Hashem already provided the shield. So visually, they witnessed how God put up that barrier that the arrows, the spears, the catapults, what they catapult couldn't go through. But here, God put up nothing. You know, there's no uh, flotation devices to get us across. The sea has a split, and the split has never split. Never, such has never happened before. This is another level of faith. But the Jews, we'll see in a moment, there was a claim against them. After what they saw, after what they experienced, they should have had sufficient faith and not spoken out of turn of their lack of graves in Egypt. And as a result of that, we'll see in a moment, that's what the Archaim Akosh points out. Although Moshe prayed at this point, Moshe, Hashem says to Moshe, my children are in a state of Danger and suffering. Don't pray, just go straight through. So Rechaim HaKadosh asks, what else does a Jew pray? 
A Jew prays when he's in time of, 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 of trouble, of pain. So he explains that because the Jews spoke out of turn by saying, oh, there were lack of graves, Tfilo would fall on deaf ears. They were no worth, longer worthy of a response because Tfilo, the concept of Tfilo is midas arachmim, is the attribute of mercy. And because they spoke so out of turn, they were worthy of mercy. So they had to demonstrate a level of trust and faith to have it restored. And the only way it could be restored is they had to show their trust to travel straight into the sea itself. That's the Orachim HaKodesh. But because of this statement, this expression, of the lack of graves that you take us to die here in the desert, why did you take out of Egypt? That was, they literally forfeited the attribute of Rachmin, and therefore the only way they could have it restored is they have to show their faith and go straight into the sea to show their level of trust.